So I'm going to be telling you about my current master's thesis. Uh, it's called Medrec. So anyone in here use Linux? Right. That's a decent number, right? So you know the command chmod, right? So it lets you change the file permissions for files on your computer. And so the approach you want to take with Medrec is that instead of treating your medical records as something that lives on someone else's database at your medical provider, you should be able to control the, the access to them the same way that you can control all the files on your computer. Right, you should be able to download them if you want and cache them locally, as well as give access to your friends, your pharmacy, um, anyone you'd like. And so my name is Chinda Chinda, and I'm a researcher on the third floor in viral communications. And I'm working on a medical record access management system. And so we've made a couple um, innovations in Medirec, um, which may be helpful to, to you when you're starting your own blockchain projects. Maybe they're novel, maybe they're not, but I find them interesting. Uh, so like this is the interface for Medrec when you first open up the application. And so you notice that you log in using a username and password, right? things that you're familiar with. And so one thing we've done is a person who's using the system doesn't need to know that they're using a blockchain-based technology. Right? They log in using their username and password, and then it retrieves locally their private key, right? which then is used to sign transactions and to sign messages to other people in the system. The closest they get is we give them a set of 12 words like this, which is their recovery seed. And we tell them to copy it down somewhere and save it, and you can use this to recover your account. And we can do this because Bitcoin developers have developed a standard which turns 12 words like these into a unique private key. And this is the closest that someone gets when using the system to actually knowing that they're using a blockchain-based technology. Additionally, just like how in cryptocurrencies, your wallet allows you to send transactions and like move your money around. In Medrec, having this application as your wallet allows you to change the management of your access permissions to your medical records. So this allows you to specify who can view your relationship with a particular provider. And so a problem that we run into with using a blockchain-based technology is cryptocurrency. Right? Because it's inexcusable, it's unallowable for us in our system to, for someone to be unable to change their medical records because, for example, they ran out of money. Right? So they couldn't revoke someone's access to their medical records. And so we had to look for a way to get around this. And what we found is, you, and for this application specifically, you can replace the financial incentive that people have to maintain the blockchain with trust. Specifically, trust in medical providers. Because medical providers are already legally obliged to handle your medical records, right? and to, they're not allowed to just let anyone access them, we decided to extend that to have medical providers run a blockchain, which allows them to manage the control over medical records for all the people, all the patients inside the system. So since we already trust medical providers to handle our own data, we extend that to have medical providers be the custodian of a blockchain, which its sole purpose is to manage who can access medical record data. And so um, one question I get a lot is, where do your medical records live? So in our system, they don't actually live on the blockchain. And this isn't something that, because as Neha said, blockchains aren't scalable. Right? And so this is a potentially unbounded amount of data that would need to be stored. And so in our system, only your medical re uh, record access permissions live on the blockchain. And that's something that you can fix. You can make estimates as to how many people live in the United States, how often they move, how often these records would need to change. And so you can put a bound on how much data would actually need to be on the blockchain. And so only those access management permissions are there. Um, the other problem you get is, since you want this to be public, um, how do you preserve people's anonymity? And so one thing you could, if you go back to cryptocurrencies, if you could somehow ensure that every relation that a person had with someone else used a different public key, use it like a different, like say a different Bitcoin address, you could make that person anonymous. Right? The way that we lose anonymity in cryptocurrencies is when you reuse the same address between different people. And so in Medirec, we do something, uh, we do the opposite. We guarantee that every interaction you have with a different, with a different person uses a different address. Right? That's inside the software. And so by doing that, we, guarantee, we provide anonymity for all the users. Even though all this information is public, it's meaningless until you tell someone who your identity is. So what we're hoping to do with the system is 
we have smart con like smart contracts all right, that live on the blockchain that contain information about your relationship with other people, and we have templates for them. All right, we have very simple versions, but since it's all free and open source software, we expect that people will be able to adapt the contracts that we've created to fit their own use case and extend them to provide additional features that we haven't even thought of. And the only thing, um, I mean, the only thing that we have to do to sign on new providers into the system is um, create functions which translate you know, their existing provider database into us, um, the system that we're using for MedRec. Right? So patients, when they view, use MedRec, they, still, they see all information from all their different providers inside a consistent format. Right? And then we have a function that lives on the provider's database that translates it into something the patient can understand. So in that way, we have a blockchain that works um, in conjunction with providers' databases. And so it's already free and open source software published up on GitHub. Uh, so it's, the project's called Medrec, and it's on the Media Lab GitHub. <laughs>